In my two most recent videos, I have given you instructions for creating a virtual presence switch that you can use for triggering status changes of each of your family members' mobile devices. I also told you that it gave you the ability to use the status of these mobile phones within the SmartThings app device list so that you can see the current state. I then told you that these established presence switches provided you with the ability to use the status of your smartphones within scenes and automations. In a follow-up video titled SmartThings Automations Using Mobile Phone Presence, I showed you how to write an automation within the SmartThings app using those virtual presence switches. The automation used the status of my family smartphones to open my garage door upon arrival. I also demonstrated how to use the smartphone presence to have my voice assistant, my Amazon Echo devices, to announce SmartThings device status changes. Specifically, I showed you how to make an announcement when your garage door opens or closes. Mandy has arrived home. But the greatest benefit of adding these virtual presence switches to your SmartThings app is that it provides you the ability to use the status of your smartphones within third-party apps. So if you follow my channel for any time now, you know that I'm a fan of Sharp Tools. So today I want to show you how you can telegraph the status of your SmartThings devices from your SmartThings app over to the Sharp Tools app and be able to create rules and also see the status of your devices within the Sharp Tools dashboard. That's up next. Whether you're new to the channel or whether you're one of my regular subscribers, I wanna welcome you in here today. My name is Bud and I enjoy doing smart home automation. If that sort of content appeals to you, then consider subscribing to my channel and uh, when you do that, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss upcoming content. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the SmartThings app. Okay, here I am into the uh, SmartThings app and you can see my iPhone presence showing up as I set up in the previous video. Before you can use Sharp Tools, you have to follow that previous video and go through the steps that I recommended to create account and then once you've had the account and signed in and authorized the devices that you're going to use within the account, then you're ready to go ahead and start automations. Uh, basically, when you add the setup within the website, then you're going to be able to see Sharp Tools as a smart app within your device list here or your smart app list, I should say. And there you see Sharp Tools. And that way you can go in there. If you want to change uh, authorization for certain switches or sensors, you can do that within this list at any time. Uh, and then you can update things uh, by going next and hitting done. And then it'll process that and update all your devices within the web application. So what I want to do now is take you into the rule engine and show you how you can use those present sensors. Let's go back on the app. So you see the present sensors here on the phone. If we go into the rule engine, I'm going to show you how to create this rule, which basically turns on lights upon any family member's arrival. So if we go in here and look at that automation, I'm going to hit edit. I'm using two devices, iPhone Bud and iPhone Arena. Now, if I had not added the, this iPhone presence in the new app, there would be no way to access the presence of these devices within Sharp Tools. So that's the beauty of adding these virtual presence switches, because then the switches can be used within this app. And basically what I'm doing is saying between sunrise and sunset, if someone arrives, anyone arrives, I want to trigger some lights. And so I'm going to show you how to create that automation. I've already, let's close this one. I've already created, a, started a duplicate of that here. And we'll go ahead and edit that so that I can show you how to set things up. Let's go ahead and get started here. We want to first establish a trigger 
by uh, establishing a trigger, what you're saying that either of these events have to occur or both of these events have to occur. So we're going to have a, an event trigger and we're going to use our iPhone present switches which are under devices as you remember from the previous videos and here are the three are so you see iPhone bud my wife and my daughter so we're first going to add one for me so the device is iPhone bud switch we want to check for presence we want to check when that presence changes to present so when iPhone buds present status changes to present so that's one trigger. We want to do the same thing for my wife's iPhone. So we're going to hit event trigger again. We're going to select the device. This time we're going to select uh, iPhone Irina. The attribute is going to be presence. The operator is going to be changes to. And the option is going to be present. So we're going to save that. All right, go back and so we have two triggers here. When any of the following changes to present, then we're gonna create a flow next. And before I create the flow, I want a condition in here because I only want the lights to turn on whenever it's between sunrise and sunset. So to do that, we're gonna select time. Current time is First, we're going to select after, and up here at the top, we're going to select sunset. So if the current time is after sunset at location Bud's home, we're going to go ahead and save that. And then we're going to add another condition because we want it between sunset and sunrise. So again, we're going to select time. We're going to select after. Oh, we're going to leave it before. I'm sorry. We're going to leave it before. This time we're going to select Sunrise at Bud's home. So go ahead and save that. So we have current time is after sunset, but before sunrise. That's the condition. And if that condition is true, then we want some lights to come on. So we're going to the then box and we're going to add some actions. First action is we want to select our first device, which is going to be my porch lights. So I want the porch lights to come on. And I'm going to save that. I also want another action that turns my kitchen lights on. So I'm going to select the device. The device is going to be my kitchen lights. And again, I want to turn those on. Hit save. And then the last device is a living room lamp. So I'm going to add an action for a device. I'm going to choose the living room lamp. And again, I want to turn that on and hit save. So reviewing the routine. Two of the triggers, when any of the following arrive, either my phone or my wife's phone, and the time is between sunrise and sunset, then I want to turn on these three lights. You just hit save and you're done. So that's one application. You'd be able to use those iPhone present switches within routines now within the Sharp Tools app. Also on the dashboard side, we can go into Bud's Smart Things dashboard and you can see that Bud's iPhone is on. Let's go to uh, my iPad mini and I'll show you how changing the status within the app can affect the status on the dashboard so that you can see that. You can also change statuses in here by pressing these various buttons as well. So let's go ahead and look at uh, my iPad mini and I'll, I'll demonstrate how it works. Okay, here we are with my iPad mini and if you see the status of my iPhone presence here in the SmartThings app that same status is reflected on the dashboard. 
So if I change the iPhone presence in the app, that'll be reflected in the dashboard. So I'm gonna turn on my daughter's iPhone and you'll see that light up here on the dashboard. The other thing you're gonna see is in this automation that I created last week, it causes the garage door to open up. So you're gonna see the garage door opener switch turn on and then back off because it's a momentary switch. And then shortly after that, you're gonna see the garage door tilt sensor change from closed to open. And uh, then I'll go ahead and turn the iPhone switch back off and you'll see that come off in, in the app. And then I'll just manually use this dashboard to close the garage door. That's the beauty of this Sharp Tools dashboard. You can uh, not only monitor the status of all your devices, but you can also control your devices from this dashboard just by pushing these tiles. So it's a must have app in my opinion. So let's go ahead and turn the switch on the iPhone to the off state or to the on state rather, and then you'll see it come on. There's the garage door opener switch turned on, and that is opening the garage door. And I just, by the way, heard that up on my kitchen Echo Dot, and there is a video showing you how you can telegraph the status of your garage door tilt sensor onto your Echo devices so that you'll know when the garage door opens or closes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to close the garage door in just a moment. But first I wanna turn off the virtual presence switch for my daughter's iPhone so you can see that reflected in the app. So we're gonna turn it off here. And by the way, I can turn either of these devices off in here and you'll see that reflected as well in the app. Let's try that on the uh, iPhone. See it turned off on this side. So it records everything that's going on in your home so that you can keep track of each device. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the garage door, but before I do that, I'm gonna open up the my camera app so that you can see the garage door in action when I hit the garage door opener switch. So let's go ahead and go into that app. I have the Ampress cameras and I have a video series on how to get that set up as well. So let's go ahead and go into the garage camera. And there you can see it there. And I'm gonna go ahead now and hit the garage door opener momentary switch to start the garage door. And you can see it in the background, I think, going down. And then when it closes, you'll see this tilt sensor go to the closed position. So the garage door has closed. So there you have it. That's how uh, nice it is to have that dashboard not only to monitor but to control your devices. Okay so I trust that you found this as uh, useful information. You can now use your iPhone presence within this third-party app. If you haven't installed Sharp Tools app yet I really encourage you to do so. It is a free app. There are some limitations on the free app but it allows you to create up to 15 devices within a dashboard and it also allows you to create unlimited rules. So it's really worth going ahead and installing this and connecting things to your SmartThings app. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That will tell the YouTube algorithms that this content may be useful to others who are into smart home automation, and it'll certainly help my channel. I do appreciate you watching today and encourage you to tune into the next video. Bye for now and God bless.